I am loving. I am fabulous. I am beautiful. I am saved. I am a victor. I am faithful. I am devout. I am accepted. I am a Christian. I am MCC. And I am MCC. I am MCC. I am MCC. And I am MCC. 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 Our reading is taken from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 24, 44 to 53, from the NRSV translation. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in His name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then He led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up His hands, He blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling us today. The, the words we receive inspire us, us comfort, comfort us, us, and, and challenge, challenge us. us. Amen. Amen. So our preacher for today is Dandy, and uh, ang ang dino uh, joke namin pero it, there's some truth in it na Dandy is the voice of conscience, ergo the voice of God in this community, and Dandy came to Open Table MCC also as a researcher. Uh, when Dandy was in, a student in UP Diliman doing uh, their thesis. At nagpunta siya sa Yellow Room nung nasa Cubao pa. And Dandy, since then, never left. Um, at ang chika ko nga sa kanya, uh, nito, nung nag, so sinagmit sa akin yung preaching niya. Uh, kasi there was a time na nag-wonder si Dandy if pwede seems to be uh, in the pastor, to be a pastor or what, ganyan. And then, ka, nung, nung nabasa ko yung preaching niya, nagkaroon din ako ng Holy Spirit moment, sabi ko, maybe if you are not more into the pastoral, baka theologian. A, 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 a more formal formal theologian. So sabi ko sa kanya, e, pag-isipan mo. No? Kasi you can be a theologian even if you're not a pastor. No, we have theologians who are not pastors. So sabi ko, mag, mag, try mo, i-discern, baka yun yung ano ng Holy Spirit sa'yo, sabi ko sa kanya. Okay, so our preacher for today, someone I really listen to, sometimes I listen to with discomfort kasi Dandy really challenges me and this community uh, to live up to our values and commitments. No? So, Preacher for today is Dandy. My hair okay? My hair okay? So, when Pastor Joseph assigned me the reading for today, I thought, this is a hard one. Because hasn't everything in the story already happened? Because we're at the end of the book? Well, I came to discover a valuable lesson to be found in these 10 verses. And the first chapter of Acts, a lesson relevant and applicable to our lives today. And it has to do with waiting. Next slide. Looking at the literary context, the Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles were written as a two-part series. 
In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus lived his life on earth, instructed his followers how to live, then he suffered, died, and rose again. In the Acts of the Apostles, we'll see how Jesus' followers spread his teachings and organized his church after their teacher was no longer physically with them. The part of the story we find the Apostles in now is between the conclusion of one chapter and the start of the next. Hmm? Okay. In the Acts of the Apostles, we'll see how Jesus' followers spread his teachings and organized his church. Yeah. After um, their teacher was no longer with them in body. So the part of the story we find the apostles in now um, is between receiving their mission from Jesus to tell how they witnessed his suffering, death, and resurrection, and before they received what they need to carry out that mission, that is, the Holy Spirit. In that in-between moment, we find the apostles waiting. There are many times in our lives where we might find ourselves in similar situations. Waiting for a groupmate or coworker to give us their part of the project so we can work on ours. Waiting for our boss to give us the materials we need to work on our task. Waiting can leave us feeling bored, unfulfilled, and restless. We might be eager to start on our task to get into action. The PLHIV experience a kind of waiting that is in common with many people with chronic illnesses. Waiting outside doctor's offices, waiting for lab results to come in waiting to hear back from your doctor when you text them about a new symptom or development. Waiting can be a time of anxiety when you don't have answers and you don't know what happens next. It's in these times of uncertainty and vulnerability that I find that waiting is an act of faith. Next slide. It takes faith to stand back and trust that the other party will do their part. It takes faith to rest easy and believe, internalize that your time to act will come. And this is hard. It sucks to not know, to have no control. It's especially true when you've had an experience like this before and you were let down or the person or body or institution does not do a lot to foster much trust. So what, we can, so what can we do to make it less hard? Reduce the anxiety of waiting and make the most of our time. Let's turn back to the apostles and see what they did as they waited. What lessons will we be able to learn and apply to our lives today? So, one, turn to God in praise, prayer, and scripture. Two, be in community. And three, prepare. So, first, turn to God in praise. Next slide. Next slide. The apostles, it said, after Jesus ascended, went to the temple and blessed the Lord. They worshiped Jesus, it said, with great joy. How would this look in our context today? Singing praises to God, giving thanks. And here's why it helps. When we remember God's promises, how God sees us through in the past, both in our own individual lives and as a community, a church across time, it brings to the front of our minds the evidence for why we are in good hands. Next slide. In cognitive behavioral therapy, I was given this worksheet to do. I'd fill it 
with what am I worried about and what's the evidence this won't come true? And in the event that it does come true, how will I handle it? Will I eventually be okay? When I remember that God, the most powerful being that is, loves me, watches over me, and wants to see me flourish, when I remember that God is with me, even when things are most dark, I have a source of great comfort. Subsection 1b, prayer. The apostles devoted themselves in prayer. The eleven disciples and women among them. So, why should we pray? How does it help us relieve our anxieties? When we hand over to God, our worries and struggles and fears, we entrust them to God, that God will take care of the things we can't control. When we do this, the burdens can weigh on us less. If we can't control it, it's not ours to carry. So just let it go and leave it to God. And what about the things within our control? Difficult choices we may have to make. We can pray to God for guidance. What does this look like? Well, for me, I keep a prayer journal. Writing helps me so sort out my thoughts. I write down my problem, my feelings, ask God for help, write down my options. Doing this gives me clarity. How is this different from regular journaling, where there's no God involved? Well, believing that my concerns are heard and that I'm not alone. That somebody knows that I'm struggling and cares with all of their love. So how can we get an idea about what God wants us to do? We can familiarize ourselves with God's character, and for that, we turn to scripture. The, the scriptures give us a window to Christians and Jews in the past, what choices they made and how they played out, the things they believed, and how they acted in doubt. We see God's promises and God's instructions. Reading the scriptures reinforces all the other points I made here. Here's how. You want to see more about how God keeps promises? You can find examples in scripture. Want to see samples of prayers? Or want to see how, what God tells people in different situations? You can find examples in scripture. At the start of the reading in Luke, Jesus reminds his apostles of the things he taught them while he was still with them, and opens their minds to understand the writings of the Old Testament with new insight. We're blessed to have Jesus' teachings and the Old Testament available to us today. Here's another thing about scripture. These stories about the first Christians and the things that they did, they allow us Christians today have to have a connection to our ancestors, it, our ancestors in the faith, tied together in a community that stretches across time. This brings me, at last, to point two. Be in community. The apostles went through these things together. Not just the eleven, and Mary and Jesus' brothers. The community of Jesus' fo Jesus followers words at that time numbered about 120. So how does community help? You aren't alone. You don't have to go through your struggles alone. We can lean on each other for support. One member of a church to another, one organization supporting another. How Open Table is working with Free to Be Me and Metro Manila Pride. And next. Next. And we as a movement of liberation for the LGBT should stand with other marginalized sectors, like the PLHIV, and PWDs more broadly, major depression, anxiety disorders, PTSD, and other kinds of neurodivergence, like autism and ADHD, are disabilities that occur in our community. Also blindness, high tricks. 
we should learn about the different axes or kinds of um, oppression for, uh, from the people most affected. Because the people with the most first-hand knowledge are the ones who know what that kind of discrimination looks like and they know how, what helps the most. And we should care because, firstly, it's the right thing to do. Secondly, to support the members of our community who are at that intersection of being LGBT and the other oppression. And thirdly, because these axes or modes of oppression affect everyone. Let's take ableism for, as an example. Ableism says, if you have a weakness in your body or mind and need support for it, especially if it's a kind most people don't need, then that's a you problem. If you can't do things everyone else can do because of your disability, ableism will treat that like it's your fault. Like you're not trying hard enough. Ableism is not considering people who can't access places or resources or opportunities because of their disability. Ableism is when you allow them to get left behind. So how does ableism affect everyone? Well, there's internalized ableism. When you don't want to start wearing glasses or hearing aids or a brace even though you know you need to. When you get sick and refuse to accommodate for the current limitations of your body and force yourself to try to achieve all the things you would with a healthy body. Machismo, toxic masculinity that, lasts at, that laughs at boys who aren't athletic, that punish perceived weakness, that has a root in ableism. The way men are more likely to die from suicide because showing weakness, asking for support, is so stigmatized, that has a root in ableism. If you've ever thought yourself better off dying young than living, old, than living to be old and dependent on others, because you think your value as a person lies in what you can do, that is also ableism. When we remove the structural barriers, the structural barriers and unlearn ableist thinking, like when we guarantee sick leave and recognize that all people deserve dignity regardless of what they can or cannot do, this benefits those most affected and everyone else as well. Next slide. All oppressions are connected. As people with different experiences, we can offer each other perspective. No person alone, no demographic alone, has the whole picture. And this brings me to my final point, prepare. When we wait, it gives us an opportunity to rest, to wind down between periods of inaction. It's also an opportunity to gather ourselves and ready our next move. Peter addressed the gathered community about filling a leadership role. They elected two candidates and prayed for God's guidance, cast lots, and that's how one was chosen. This, I'd say, was an act of preparing. By the first of Jesus' followers before they came out to the world. How does this look like today? Well, we as a church discuss our plans with congregational members in meetings, congregational meetings. We hear your perspectives, pray and prepare before we launch our projects. Free to be me, the Metro Manila Pride Concert number. When we look at our queer history, we see examples of massive protests, which had to be planned and organized. For example, in the 80s, during the AIDS crisis, there were, there were protests known as die-ins. There was one where over 5,000 gathered in front of a New York cathedral. 
Hundreds of activists entered the church and laid down between the pews, symbolizing all the people who died from the government's inaction, from the government, society, and the church, all acting like AIDS, an illness, was the fault of the victims. ACT UP, an AIDS activist group, organized this together with WAM, a group focused on women's health, who protested the Catholic Church's blocking of abortion. In solidarity across demographics is how they achieved such strength in numbers. Ironically, this demonstration was called Stop the Church, but as I see it, calling out injustice Demanding accountability and change? That's just like what the prophets did. It's in line with what Jesus did. These are the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence at the aforementioned protest. They recognized MCC's founder, Troy Perry, as a saint. Our church has roots in LGBT activism and it's a church descended through common teaching from, the, from those first century Christians. So when we wait, let's do so as an act of faith. Let's turn to God in praise, prayer, and the reading of scripture. Let us confer with community to share support and gain perspective. And may we do these as part of preparation. So when it comes time to come out to the world and make a big statement, bonggang bonga ang handa natin.